So, I'm your girl, Egyptian, and today I want to talk about next level. Going to the next level. Um, oftentimes we think that when we get off course, that that will change the positive energy that we were hoping to come. So oftentimes we feel like, you know, oh man, I messed up. Or, oh man, I didn't complete something. And we seem to think that that will be the preventive factor that will stop either a blessing or that promotion or whatever it is that you're looking forward to, that expectation from coming towards you. But the fact of the matter is, even though we have something called karma, you have good karma and bad karma. But what we have to train our minds to understand is that positive energy is so important to whatever circumstance that we are going through. Uh, when we think sometimes when we do something or we lie or we steal or we do something to someone else, the automatically, depending on the type of person you are, what your ethics are, what your goal, your morals are, your values are. And if you have something called remorse, um, the remorse can lay so heavily on your heart and on your mind that you literally attract those negative vibrations that will come back to you that you've done to someone else. Now, not to say that if you don't have remorse that negativity won't still come to you, but the fact of the matter is that, and like I always say, something that resonates with me with my favorite person, Ralph Smart, you don't attract what you want, you attract who you are. And a lot of times you're attracting those things that you keep thinking, even though you want better. You're attracting what you think you will end up with. So my challenge and my challenge to you and even to myself is when we do the things that are not so good to ourselves or not so good to someone else, writing down just really quickly, whether it be in your phone, whether it be you saying it, say what it is that you want and focus on that as it as if it is already. You know, just like, you know, uh, we as a man think if so he is, as a woman think if so she is. So it's getting into the the groove of thinking positive, even when you don't feel like you deserve it or even when you don't feel like being positive. Because life can get you down, you know. And I understand that. I have so many friends that come to me and say, you know, Jip, you know, you are somebody that I really feel like I can talk to and I feel like you're my sister or my brother my, my brother my sister and and you know we are brothers in love brothers and sisters in love and I feel like I can talk to you and in retrospect they feel you know in having that outlet that they can release that negative energy uh whatever's going on in their mind and I can receive it but I have to still put on a a negative blocker for myself because that energy can still rub off. It can still rub off on me. And then I find myself speaking negative or saying something or holding anger even longer than I normally would. See, it's all a process. You know, when you start when you start opening your mind to the fact that people are at different elevation levels in their life people are at different uh vibrations different urgency levels in their life regardless of their age it has to come a time where you know it's time for you so put in those good old times together along with the bad times and saying to yourself regardless of the bad times i'm gonna have a good time so just like if you have good times and everything is all good you're gonna feel this excitement you're gonna be like this is good this is how it's supposed to be i love you i love you too i love you too you know it's gonna be such a high 
high atmosphere, high heart feeling, high mind feeling. Everything just feels perfectly placed. And th that's what you continue to attract. And then when you do something, you know, that makes someone else feel out, uh, makes someone else feel down or out, or you feel down or out because of something you did, then you are literally that negative vibration you're putting on yourself. So um, it's, it's practice. You know, we have to practice positive thinking. It's crazy, right? You don't necessarily have to practice negative thinking. And why is that? Because everything around you, depending on your atmosphere, is already negative. So your mind is already conditioned to think that way. And it's not your fault. But it becomes your fault when you know that you have to try something new in order to get something better. If you do what you've always done, you're going to get the same results always if you continuously bicker argue fuss fight you're going to always get the same results if you don't communicate respect um uh compromise instead you continue to bicker argue argue and disrespect so that goes the same with when you do something even if it's against yourself, like you say, oh, man, I said I wasn't going to drink or oh man, I said I was going to eat right and I'm going to I'm going to start exercising. And then you have this pity party like, oh, man, I just ate that whole half a whole half a cake or I just drunk all weekend. And now it's this pity party of feeling like, OK, well, the next thing that I wanted was positive is not going to come because I didn't do what I said I was going to do. But the problem is. It's OK. You know, if you are a believer of God, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, if you are not a believer of God and you are not a believer of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the one thing that I know is that positive energy is positive energy. Period. Who, who determines who's giving you that energy is within you. I believe in God. I feel like God is in me and, and he, when I was brought to this world, I feel like the the life that gave me life is God. And to me, God is the God of heaven. And that is my truth. That is the truth that I feel uh, secures my sanity because that's what it's about. So when I do something that is off track or it takes me out of my positive flow of thinking, okay, my next my next steps won't come so easily because I just I just fail. You know, I go to my source of life, which is God. And whatever your source of life is, whether it is just if it's doing yoga, if it's um, uh, Islam, whatever your truth is, the one thing that we have in common is the we have a lot of things in common. But the one thing that we have in common is wanting to gain peace of mind when it comes to our spiritual freedom spiritual freedom is literally literally an entity within an entity within our heart the heart of our mind so when you have spiritual freedom within your heart and the heart of your mind no matter what you do you'll know how to get back on one accord and the way to get back on one accord is, yes, you feel what you need to feel. If you got to cry, if you got to yell, if you got to shout, if you got to take it out on even somebody, go ahead and cry, go ahead and yell, go ahead and shout, go ahead and take it out on somebody, but then ask for forgiveness. Because that is the way, that's, that's the way back to your positive energy. That's how you get back to your positive energy. If you are a believer of God, you get down on your knees and you pray. That is the way to get back to your positive energy. Now, and I'm not saying that you continuously do the same things, one thing after another, because what I do know is that God does not, if he fit, okay, and I'm going to go biblical. If you feel that, okay, all I got to do is just ask for forgiveness. If we're going to go by the word, that's not the word, because if you feel like, okay, I did this and I'm going to do it again. Even though I'm going to do it again, I'm not going to ask for forgiveness. This time, you're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up for negative energy. And you're setting yourself up for a life of, of, of um, uh, give me the word, a life of damnation. 
Because I feel like hell, as far as it being a heaven or a hell, that is a subconscious way of thinking of what we've created here on earth. And then what us as believers in God have read. And then when you start looking into other spiritualities and religion, you start taking, well, for me, start taking pieces of what makes sense to make it all come together. And what I have learned is that hell and heaven are the consciousness of what we have created it to be for the belief system that we have here. It may not necessarily be, you know, fire and flames, but what is your hell? You know what I mean? Because it could be something that you really, really don't like. It could be the fact that you don't like a particular show and for the rest of your life when you die, that is probably what you'll be watching. You know what I mean? I know that's such a vague way of thinking, but oh, not a vague way. It's actually a very, um, uh, what's an, another way? Um, I'm going to say eclectic because I am. It's an eclectic way of thinking because of all the different things that I've studied and all the different uh all the different uh, professionals that I've even listened to on their take. Because some believe in God, some be don't believe in God, but that's their salvation. So who, nobody can dictate, you know, until that time comes. Nobody's ever really came back and was able to, you know, take you with them to show you. So you can only go off of what they experienced. So, you know, getting back to yourself and getting back to understanding that even when you make mistakes, even when you fall, you find your salvation through your source. Again, whether that is God of heaven, Muslim, um, yoga, um, uh, sorry, Buddha. Um, and for me, I'm not saying any of those other religions are for me. But I do take certain things from a many of those religions. God is who I believe in. But I do love yoga because I understand the, 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 the patience and the practice that it takes to become disciplined in understanding this body and breathing and, ex and stretching and, and doing all the things that this body will entail me to do. And when I do yoga, what I, the, my, my meditation is to God to a God of heaven, God of, of heaven in, in my consciousness of understanding. That's my salvation. That's my salvation. And I am at peace with that. And I still can sit among others who believe something totally different. And that's fine as long as we respect each other, as long as we acknowledge each other, and as long as we know that we all have downs. But there is always a pattern to how we get back up. And I really feel like people who are of some type of spirituality have a, 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 a particular way that is so spiritually locked in. And they may not be praising God, but it's so spiritually locked in that that's how they find their building blocks to get back to their positive energy and to receiving their next blessings to come in their mind. See, blessings will still come even when we don't deserve it in our mind, you know. But when you're clear of consciousness, like you you don't have any bad karma, you feel like you've been doing everything the right way, it's just an open path for all those good things to come. But when you start blocking and thinking negative, you start blocking things that was on this way, but you like, man, I don't deserve it. Okay, that thought just blocked it. Bam, man, shoot, I shouldn't have did that because now this is not going to happen. Bam, that block, that just blocked it instead of saying, you know, for me, God forgive me. I know that I've been here before and I've asked you before and before to forgive me. And I know that I'll eat, there will be consequences for my actions. But I know that you also said that if I confess to you and I admit what I've done, that you will forgive me. And to even in me going through my suffering of whatever it is that the karma has brought, whether it be suffering or bliss, because karma can be both, but we're going to talk about suffering, that... You don't, God does not um, commend the fact that you are suffering through what you knew was wrong, but he will still forgive you. Now, if you're suffering through some type of turmoil that somebody put upon you and you suffer through it and you endure, God commends that. He commends that. And that's in 1 Peter, if anybody wants to look, it's even 1 Peter or 2 Peter um, 2. You can check that out, 1 Peter or 2 Peter 2. Um, but... For those who don't believe in God, 
um, or believe in another entity of life, tap into the leaders of that belief system so that you can find your way back and so that you can, can, can continue your journey. So that's my advice today. This is your girl, Lisha D, a.k.a. Egyptian, Satoni Visual Media. Oh, and 3D Inspiration Glasses. That's me. I got a lot going on, y'all. I have a lot of inspiration, aspiration, motivation that I want to share. And um, this is my... This is my platform, and I, I, my only hope is that my tribe will connect with me and that we will become, we will dance and sing and move and sway in the same way and talk and have fun and connect in so many different aspects of conversation and that we will vibe. Oh, my gosh. I love when I walk in the room and I can feel a good vibe, but I, I can definitely feel the bad ones. And if you're anything like me, you know what I'm talking about. So again, I'm your girl, Egyptian, and this is another episode of A Journey Come True. God bless you. Peace. Leave me to an everlasting path. Leave me to an everlasting path.